Yes, I think it is visible now. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Repeat the visibility there. Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay, in the previous class, uh, we have discussed about uh, mobility management, right? Or, or the X2 interface, isn't it? Right? So today we'll discuss about the uh, intercell interference coordination in LTE. So what is this uh, intercell interference? Anyone can say? What do you mean by first of all interference? Yes, what do you mean by interference? Disturbances. Hello. Yes, Vaishnavi. Vaishnavi. Yes, uh, Nishit Rati. Nishit Rati. So, new matter that we are talking about, it's a in that country. Agala, matter of only few students are managing that. Raga, we are under. Hello, hello, under that. Bear or all, yeah, no, ah, no, ah, no, ah, Hey, man, sir. Hmm. Hello. Yes, sir.
Yeah, so so much a problem. Okay, mm. I was asking about uh, interference. Anyone can say what it is quickly. Okay, so much of time we have wasted. Yes, disturbances in signals, sir. But one signal will uh, interfere with another signal. Okay, so what type of interference uh, you expect in the this uh, cellular communication inter and intracell interference yeah inter and intracell so that is actually in case of uh, 2g networks okay because there we use the frequency planning and uh, so the frequencies used in each cell will be different okay so depending upon the frequency reuse factor we say about the co channel cells and other things but in case of lte uh, the frequency reuse factor is one. Okay, okay. means in every cell, uh, the same frequencies are used. Okay, so as uh, the frequency reuse factor is one, uh, we say the spectrum efficiency is high. Okay, so here uh, the problem with uh, this uh, is the cells which are there at the edge of the uh, means the user equipments. Okay, which are there at the edge of the cell are uh, more prone to interference okay because the same frequencies are used in the in all the cells right so how do we mitigate that uh, interference okay is the question okay so to do that there are uh, different techniques um, how do we overcome that intercell interference so and why we talk about the user equipments which are at the cell heads. So this figure shows clearly. See, this is one uh, cell right, which I have written uh, uh, E node B. Right? This is one cell covered by this much of area. And this is another cell E and B, right? A <coughs> covered by this much of area. Right? So the user who is there at the edge of the cell, okay, we call this as a cell edge user. So he is actually in the coverage area of the ENPA, right? But it will be getting interference from the ENBB, right? Yes or no? And it's uh, shown by the arrow, okay, interference from the uh, ENBB. And if the user is at this point, he will not be facing any interference from the neighbor cells. Okay, this is in the center of the region, right? Central region, there will be no interference when he moves out of this coverage area, right? So this we call as a edge, edge of the cell. So if the users are there at this uh, uh, edges, then they will be interfered with the, means they will get the interference with the neighbor cells, okay? So here uh, the aim is to increase the cell edge throughput, okay? Cell edge throughput means the user who are there at the edge of a cell, they should also be able to get the maximum throughput okay, without much interference with the neighbor cell. Okay. So in case of LTE, as I said, the frequency reuse factor is one. So that is done to achieve the maximum spectrum efficiency. Right. So the, the meaning of frequency reuse factor one is all the neighbor cells will be having the same frequency channels. Okay. And as I said, there is no uh, frequency planning also okay to deal to deal with the interference issues because in case of uh, gsm system as i said there the frequency reuse factor will be depends upon the cluster size 
we say n equal to 3 or n equal to 7 and so on, right? So depending upon that means if I say n equal to 7, see there will be 7 cells, 1 in the center and 6 in the uh, each uh, side of the hexagon. So that is one cluster. So that uh, we plan the frequency for that cluster and that will be repeated over the entire geographical area. Right, so that is how that works. But here, in case of LTA, as I said, the frequency reduced factor is one, means we use uh, same frequencies in all the cells. So there will be no cell planning uh, to deal with the interference issues. So as I said, uh, uh, to better understand, okay, what is this uh, cell edge user and uh, cell center user? Okay, this picture is shown. Uh, the gray color, okay. Uh, with the circle, I will tell inner sector one, right? sector two, sector three, sector four, sector five, sector six, sector seven. Right? That the color uh, shown uh, will be a cell center user, and uh, this red color, okay, and blue color, and this green color, okay. These are the cell edge user, okay, cell edge user. So we divide in this case as what two types of users. One is cell center user. And another one is a cell edge user. Okay, so I said uh, I differentiated those two users with the different colors. One by showing the gray color with uh, the circle, right? And uh, cell edge users with the different colors, like as I said, red, green, yellow, and all, so that uh, you will be able to understand. Okay, if the user is in this region, uh, he will be affected by the intercell interference. Okay, so CCU means. Uh, uh, cell center users are the users distributed in the gray region of this diagram, right? And the cell edge users are the users who are distributed in these uh, areas, like uh, this color, right? Red, green, blue, and so on, right? Uh, so the cell edge users uh, must use the uh, corresponding specified frequency points okay, to ensure uh, there is an orthogonality between the different cells. So here we use uh, Z of two sequences, as I used to say, right? So they are orthogonal, and with that uh, we will be able to minimize the interference. Okay. Well, see the cell edge users can be assigned the higher transmission power for the frequency reuse factor, which is greater than one so that they will be able to connect with that particular cell okay uh, these are the frequency points okay, are not overlapped at the edges so that adjacent cell interference will be less i hope this picture is clear to understand uh, who are the cell center users and who are the cell edge users and who will be getting interference with the neighbor cell compared with the previous uh, diagram. This is also, uh, there will be a clear indication of uh, the coverage of the E and B, and as well as the cell edge user. Okay, so in case of downlink, there are three approaches to mitigate the intercell interference. One, uh, first one is, uh, called uh, intercell interference randomization okay so what we do here is we do the means this uh, intercell interference randomization is uh, achieved <coughs> by scrambling the code word okay, after channel encoding is done with the pseudo random sequence uh, i think uh, we'll be able to visualize the diagram of uh, downlink transport channel processing and as well as the uplink transport channel processing, right? So in case of downlink transport channel processing, uh, input is what? The transport block, right? The transport block is passed through different stages. Means we do uh, CRC addition, then channel encoding will be done, then rate matching, uh, then uh, concatenation. The output of that entire block will be the code word, right? That code word, we used to do the scrambling first with the pseudo noise sequence. So that is what uh, I'm saying here. Okay. So by doing scrambling the code word after the channel coding process with the pseudo random sequence, 
uh, you will be able to achieve this uh, intercell interference randomization. And uh, what type of uh, scrambling we use here? We use the cell specific scrambling. Even uh, about uh, what is the cell specific scrambling and all uh, those things I have discussed while discussing about the downlink uh, transport channel processing, right? With a specific sequence, isn't it? So, uh, here to mitigate the intercell interference from the neighboring cells that is randomized by using the cell specific scrambling. So, with that, it is possible to uh, suppress the interference, right? Because uh, the processing gain uh, will be provided by the channel code. Okay. So, this is in brief about how do we mitigate the intercell interference by using this technique. What is the technique is called? intercell interference randomization. How do we do this? This can be achieved by scrambling the code word right, with the pseudo noise sequence. And here what type of scrambling is used? The cell specific scrambling sequence is used. So that will be able to mitigate the intercell interference from the neighbor cells. Right? So this uh, uh, interference suppression Okay, is achieved with the you know, processing gain provided by the channel code. Okay. So if I don't use the scrambling, what happens? So, so without scrambling, what is going to happen is the channel decoder, that is at the receiver side, right, will be equally uh, treating the desired signal and as well as the interfering signal, okay, on the same radio resource. So that leads to interference. So by uh, doing this scrambling process, right, uh, at the receiver side after the channel coding with the pseudo random sequence with the cell specific scrambling, it is possible to mitigate the intercell interference. So, this is uh, one way of mitigating the ICI. So, in uh, to say in few words, the key thing is here we do the scrambling of the code word with the pseudo noise sequence. So, how do we get the code word? That is the output of the uh, channel uh, coding, right? That will be scrambled with the pseudo noise sequence. And here, what type of uh, scrambling is used? The cell specific scrambling. Okay. So, that will be able to mitigate the intercell interference from the neighbor cell. Okay. So, and we will be able to uh, suppress the interference with the processing gain that is uh, provided by the channel code. Okay, if we don't use the scrambling, what happens, I said, uh, the channel decoder will treat uh, both the interference signal and as well as the desired signal on the same radio resource. So that leads to again interference. So that is why we need to do the scrambling of the code word. <laughs> this is one way of mitigating ICI. The second one is ICI cancellation, Mr. Okay, that is the uh, intercell interference cancellation. So, this is achieved uh, when the user equipment okay, is able to decode the interfering signals and it can generate and then subtract them from the desired signal. Okay. This intercell interference cancellation is achieved if the user equipment is able to decode the interfering signals, uh, it can generate and uh, that generated interference signal will be subtracted from the desired signal. Okay. So, how do we achieve that? That is achieved with the multi-user detector at the user equipment. Means if I use a multi-user detector at the user equipment, it is possible to decode the interfering signal, right? And uh, that uh, interfering signal will be subtracted from the desired signal. So, with that, uh, we say the ICI will be means the intercell interference cancellation will happen. Okay, So, to decode the interfering signal uh, from the neighboring cells, the user equipment should uh, know the transmission format. Okay, uh, Actually, that uh, transmission format will not be available as this user equipment will not be able to decode the physical downlink control channel from the neighboring cells. So, alternatively, we can do this ICA cancellation uh, by using spatial domain technique also. Uh, <coughs> this spatial domain technique is by using uh, multi antennas. Okay, spatial multiplexing, those things already we have discussed in the 
other modules, right? So with that also, we'll be able to uh, eliminate the inter cell interference. Okay. So in case of ICA cancellation, the takeaway is uh, the user equipment should have a multi-user detector, right? If it is having a multi-user detector, it is possible to decode the interfering signals and uh, that will be subtracted from the desired signal. So with that, it is possible to eliminate the interference uh, from the neighbor cells. This is the second uh, way to mitigate ICI. And third one is, we say ICI coordination or avoidance. Okay. So this is achieved by applying restrictions on the downlink resource management okay. in the coordinated way between the neighboring cells. So how do we coordinate this downlink resource management is a question here with the neighboring cells, right? So I said uh, this ICI coordination or avoidance is achieved by applying restrictions on the downlink resource management. So what is the restrictions here we need to apply? The restrictions can be applied on either time resource or frequency resource, okay? Or the transmit power used at the uh, ENB, okay? So with this, uh, by restricting uh, the downlink resource management, uh, that is either time or frequency or power. Okay, these are the resources, right? Time, frequency, and power. Uh, at each ENB, it is possible to uh, do the uh, coordination among the neighboring cells to mitigate the intercell interference. Okay. So to do that, to do that coordination requires uh, uh, inter ENB communication and the user equipment measurements and reporting. Okay. So until unless it gets data from the user equipment, ENB cannot uh, take uh, a decision about whether that uh, user equipment is getting uh, disturbed by neighboring cell or not. Right. So that is why it requires uh, inter ENB communication and user equipment measurements and reporting. Uh, to the ENBs. <laughs> okay. uh, actually, this uh, ICA coordination or avoidance is uh, an advanced technique and it requires additional signaling. Okay. And this uh, ICA coordination can be a static or it can be a semi static. So, there are the two ways of uh, ICA coordination. Right, so with a different inter ENB communication requirement and uh, different performances. Let us see what is this uh, static uh, ICA coordination and what is uh, semi static ICA coordination. So, in case of uh, static ICA coordination, we say the cell planning process okay, uh, is done. Okay. And uh, it does not require uh, uh, the frequent uh, reconfiguration. Okay. So the example of uh, such an uh, scheme is the static fractional frequency reuse we said. Static fractional frequency reuse. So here uh, the static coordination strategy requires uh, either no or we can say little inter ENB signaling. Okay. So there is a performance limitation. Uh, on this here, because uh, the dynamic characteristics like uh, cell loading or user distribution are not uh, taken into consideration in this uh, type of uh, coordination. Okay, in case of static ICA coordination. So what I said, there are uh, two categories of uh, ICA coordination. One is I said uh, uh, static, another one is semi-static. Right? So, in case of static, what is happening is that uh, during the cell planning process, means right, it does not require uh, the frequent reconfiguration. Okay. Uh, means uh, this uh, static coordination strategy requires uh, hardly no inter ENB signaling, but there is a performance limitation due to the dynamic characteristics. Uh, like cell loading or user distribution uh, are not taken into the consideration while doing this uh, planning process. Okay, that is why it is called static. And another is semi-static, right? So in case of semi-static ICA coordination, uh, this requires 
the reconfigurations on the time scale okay, of the order of seconds or even a little bit longer also. Here the inter ENV communication or the X2 interface is required uh, in the semi static AC coordination. Okay, so the information exchanged uh, between the neighboring ENVs will be what? Either the transmission power or the traffic load okay, on uh, different resource blocks. Okay, so these are the informations uh, exchanged between the neighboring ENBs. One is the transmission power and another one is the traffic load. Uh, so by considering that information, transmission power and traffic load uh, from the neighboring ENBs, IC separation will be uh, possible to uh, apply. That means uh, what we can say, the intercept interference separation will be more efficient by having the knowledge of a neighbor cell transmission power and as well as the traffic load capacity. So this uh, ICA coordination is uh, basically a scheduler implementation issue at the ENB. Okay, and this LTE defines this ENB power restriction signaling in the downlink. So which is actually a bit map term. So we call with the name as relative narrow band transmit power indicator that is RNTP indicator. Okay, so this will be exchanged between ENBs over the X2 interface. What is the term called relative narrow band transmit power? Okay, so this will uh, be indicating what is the amount of power restricted on the signaling in the downlink. Okay, and uh, this indicator will be exchanged between the ENBs over the X2 interface. Okay, so this is how the coordination among the ENBs is done to eliminate the ICA. So here the each bit of that RNTP will indicate the corresponding uh, to the one uh, PRB that is physical resource block and it is used to indicate the maximum anticipated transmit power on that PRB. So based on the RNTP indicator from the neighboring cells, each ENB is able to improve the performance of the user equipments in its own cell by scheduling and power allocation. Uh, so this diagram shows uh, how this uh, power allocation uh, pattern will be happening in the three neighbor cells. So this is in the uh, first cell. Okay. Three cells have considered. In the first cell, this is the amount of transmit power. Okay, so power versus uh, this one frequency. So this happens in cell one. Okay, and cell when the neighbor is cell two, it will be increased to cell two. Yeah, this is what happens power in cell two. And uh, in cell three, in cell three, power uh, will be more. One cell two and the other cell three or frequency versus this. Means in that uh, wherever the user equipment is there, in that cell for the cell edge user, the power will be increased. Okay. That is what uh, this one. Uh, so this is all about the uh, what I can say uh, three okay, mitigation techniques for. Uh, eliminating the intercell interference. So to brief once again, what I said, one is ICI randomization, second one is ICI cancellation, and third one is ICI coordination. Okay. So is there any doubts regarding uh, these three techniques? So I hope this itself will convey a proper understanding about what is intercell interference and uh, right this diagram and this diagram. You can take a, so these are not there in your step textbook. I took from other source to get a clarity in understanding about what is intercell interference. Okay. Yes, sir. Any questions to ask? You can ask. No question, sir.
Uh, no question, sir. Is it clear? Whatever. I yes, sir. So, fine. Then, if uh, things are clear, so these two uh, slides I have taken extra from other source. Okay, I don't think that uh, is out of syllabus. Okay, so for better clarity, I took this. Hmm? Next is from the research text. And these three techniques are described very clearly in the uh, text. As far as the link is concerned, I said that these are the three techniques to mitigate the ECA. So I think more frequently they have asked a question on this topic, intercell interference, mitigation in downlink. So three techniques, no? so they are asking for nine marks. So it is so easy to explain, right? ICA randomization, ICA cancellation, and ICA coordination. So you should be able to tell what is happening in each of the mitigation techniques. What do we do in ICA randomization? I said we do scrambling of the code word right with the pseudo random sequence after channel encoding right and what type of scrambling we use we use cell specific scrambling right so with that uh, intercell interference from the neighboring cell will be randomized so it is possible to suppress the interference because uh, the channel coding property is the uh, processing gain okay i hope uh, the term of processing gain uh, you will be able to recall from your uh, uh, spread spectrum communication concept there we used to say this uh, processing gain tb by tc anybody remember tb is the bit duration and tc is the chip duration isn't it so uh, what is a pseudo noise sequence right how many bits i use for each bit of information for spreading the information signal that is what is this one processing gain so any doubt in this very few things, only three points are there. Ultimately, you have to tell about, uh, speak about scrambling, and that what type of scrambling? Cell specific scrambling. And how do we suppress the interference? That's all. Okay. That is in uh, first case, randomization. In cancellation, what we do? We use the multi user detector at the user equipment. So that uh, multi user detector at the user equipment will be able to decode the interfering signal so that it can subtract that signal from the desired signal. So with that, it is possible to cancel the interesting interference. Even uh, that can be achieved by using spatial domain also, I said, spatial domain techniques, right? Yes, sir, no? Yes, sir. And the third case is the coordination. Yes, sir. Here, uh, the coordination of the uh, resources, like time, frequency, and power. Right? So that requires inter ENB communication and as well as the user equipment measurements and reporting. In that there are two cases I said. One is a static and the other one is semi-static. Uh, in case of uh, static, I said there will be no need of any self-planning process right? and it does not require any uh, frequent uh, reconfiguration also. Right? And it does not require any inter ENB signaling also. Uh, and the performance of uh, this coordination is limited by the dynamic characteristics of the what uh, uh, this one so like cell loading or user distribution right so with that uh, uh, what is happening in static in case of semi-static i said it requires a reconfiguration on the time scale that may be in the order of seconds or even it may be more and uh, here uh, so inter ENB communication is established over the extreme interfaces, right? So what type of information will be exchanged uh, with the neighboring ENBs? So it will exchange the transmission power and the traffic load on the different resource blocks. So with that information, it is possible to suppress the intercell interference. Uh, I said it is uh, basically a uh, scheduler implementation issue at the ENB. And uh, this LTA system defines this ENB power restriction signaling in the downlink. So that is by using a uh, what uh, indicator? By using RNTP indicator. That is a relative narrowband transmit power indicator. So that will be exchanged between the ENBs over the X2 interface. So this uh, uh, each bit of this RNTP indicator uh, is corresponds to one physical resource block that is used to indicate the maximum anticipated transmit power on that uh, physical resource block 
right? So based on the RNTP indicator from the neighboring cells, so each ENB is able to improve the performance of the user equipment in its own cell by scheduling and power allocation. Right? So I have shown an example how uh, the power pattern exists in three different cells. This is in cell one, cell two, and cell three. Uh, so let me take up this topic here, maybe in the next class. Okay. So this is about a COMP. Let's see what it is in that. Right. Uh, and after this, there is one more topic that is uh, how do we mitigate ICA in the uptake? Uh, these techniques are there. I think with that, uh, next one is random, that is uh, land procedure. So with that, I will be able to say this model will be over. Okay. I think. Uh, Today I have at 11 o'clock, no? Yes, third hour. Yes, sir, no? Yes, sir. Uh, I will complete in third hour about uh, uh, the rest of the topic. Uh, ICA mitigation in the uplink and as well as the RAN uh, uh, procedure mobility. Okay, random access network procedure mobility. Fine then. So I hope everybody chatted your revision in the chat box. Fine. So let me close the session.